Hey there everyone. Yes, there has been a little time since the last review, but I was very under the weather and well, quite frankly, doing videos was difficult. But enough about that. Let's get right back into the swing of things and start with this Epos 3439 Classic Moon Phase. This is an interesting piece, especially for me, as these are not normally the type of watches I review or personally own but it's good to branch out, and I really do have a soft spot for Epos watches, and I thought I should check one of these out. This is a Swiss-made piece, of course, and it's using a moon phase with the Solita SW330 as a base, and then modified by Epos. Now, this one here is on a leather strap, but it also comes on a bracelet, and there are rose gold options as well, so let's take a look at this classic complication piece and talk about what it offers for its high price tag. So yes, this does have a high price tag at $3,200. And as with all watches I review that get up there in price, I scrutinize them even more because let's face it, you're spending your hard-earned money on a watch, and unless you are wanting a piece just for the name and the clout, you'll want to know if you're actually getting your money's worth for a piece. Now, this moon face is a gorgeous-looking piece. Let's get that out of the way first. There's no denying that. That dial is striking with the white and the dark blue, the stars, and of course, that really cool textured moon. And this piece even looks very cool in the dark. Just take a look. As I stated in the specifications, this watch does use a modified SW330 movement, very nicely decorated, and then it is modified by Epos in-house, as they say, with the moon phase complication. Now, moon phase complications are some of the oldest complications in watches and can be found going back to pocket watches, and before watches, people were still using devices they carried around to track the moon. Now this one here, which I hope I am pronouncing right, is referred to as the bosom moon phase, and that is because it uses the aperture on the dial to track the moon, versus a radial moon phase, which has a hand that goes around the dial to track the moon. And a little bit of history here. Apparently Patek Philippe made the first moon phase wristwatch back in 1925, so we're just two years shy of it being 100 years since the first moon phase wristwatch. So up on top, you have the month and the day, and the date is on the inner track, and then you have that pointer hand to highlight it. And of course, you have that cutout on the dial to track the phases of the moon through the lunar cycle. Now, setting the watch is interesting, as you can just roll through it all with the large crown, but if you need to get things done a little quicker, you'll want to use the inset buttons on the sides of the case. Now let's talk about this case design though for a minute, and then I will tell you the first thing that I find to be a flaw. The case is highly polished with beautiful ribbing where those inset buttons are, which give the case a little something extra without making it overly intricate. Now you probably know where I'm going with this. How do you press those buttons? Well, Epos gives you a little tool, a very cheap, tiny tool of some kind of metal, to use to quickly change the complications on the dial. Now one, the tool should be better, possibly larger, maybe say Epos on it, and the actual tip should have a plastic coating on it so you don't risk scratching up your case when you're setting the time and the day. So is the little tool functional? Sure, so would a push pin be, I guess, but I'll show you just the moon phase here as I don't want to scratch up all the buttons, but pressing it, you will see how the moon advances through the cutout. And when you press any of the other buttons, it will scroll through the day or the month or it'll move the hand around to adjust the date. Okay, so we have a beautiful dial, but I will say when you get up close to that cutout for the moon phase, I can see a little area of white underneath around the edge of the cutout. Now, I don't know if it has to be like this, and I may be way too picky or asking too much for it to be colored all the way around in blue. What do you think? I'll be honest with you guys. This is my first time with a moon phase for any length of time, and they are now watches I regularly look at, so I may be too critical here. 
Otherwise, this case and dial really is beautiful. A very classic looking case and a watch that would really be a great piece to wear to the office daily or for whatever dressy events you need to attend. I could definitely see a watch like this being a dress watch for me, even though we don't really need the moon face complications anymore, but hell, I don't dive either, and most of us all own dive watches too, so there you go. Now, one other area I do find lacking, though, is this leather strap. It's real leather, but faux alligator, black, lightly padded with black stitching. There is a bracelet option available as well, but this strap, well... This strap could be better. It would be okay on a thousand dollar watch, I think, but at this price point, I would like it to be backed with the same leather and pattern on the back as it is on the front. And to me, either go leather or go alligator. I don't need the pattern if it's not going to be real. Of course, that's just my opinion. And on the buckle, well, that's a cheap thumbnail buckle, no way around it. At $3,200, this is not the buckle one expects. Apparently, you can request a deployment buckle, which I can't comment on the quality of, but I think it would probably look better than this one. As far as fit on my 7.5 inch or 19.05 centimeter wrist, I am in the fourth hole from the bottom, so it does fit, and there is extra room if you have a larger wrist than mine. This strap definitely is on the stiffer side and requires break-in, and of course, with that backing, it's going to show stains or sweat marks over time. Now, you could always find a better strap to put on this watch, just like we do with all of our other watches, but it's my job here to point out the things that I consider to be flaws. So, I don't overly care for the strap, and I wish Epos put a little more thought into the tool that they give you uh, for the quick change complications, but I still do find this to be a striking looking piece, and... In the days of smartphones and smartwatches, for that matter, we don't need to track the moon like they used to, but these style of watches are still pretty popular, if for nothing else than the cool factor of them, and generally these pieces are on the dressier side as well, so you can class yourself up a bit when you go out for a night on the town. Anyways, let me know what you think of this piece down in the comment section, and if you have any questions, do let me know, and you can find my written review on watchreport.com as well. All links, including a link to the Epos website, will be down below. And if I can ask, please make sure you hit that like button, comment, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. I know, everyone says it. But if you like these videos and reviews, nothing helps us out more than those three things. All of them are free, and they'll only take less than a minute of your time. This is Don Evans from Watch Report. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.